Hey boys and girls, welcome into a special edition guest blade. Now, they say special edition because I pretty much retired guest blade last year. I just don't have the time to, honestly, I don't have time to sit down and do videos on my own knives, let alone get a knife in from somebody else, whether I know them well or not, have possession of their knife, wait around and wait around to finally getting the time to make a video and then get it back in the mail to them. It's just not fair to them, and I really don't want the pressure. But this knife actually belongs to a very, very good friend of mine. His name is Abe Galski, Abraham Galski, lives out in Miami, Florida, and uh, he and I have uh, struck up quite the friendship over the past uh, year and a half or so. And during that course in time, he had placed an order with Frank Fisher for a few knives, actually multiple orders. And that all came from the original video that I did about two years ago, and that was a guest blade video. That was on the original Frank Fisher battle. Now, that was the little three and a quarter inch blade battle. Uh, it was a frame lock, uh, carbon fiber presentation side, gorgeous knife. And then I got my order in with Frank, and you guys know my number one, my favorite knife right here. It's still, even though everybody's been trying to get Frank to make one identical, it is still, to this day, a one-off. This was the uh, three, uh, sorry, three and three-quarter inch blade. Everything's double thick. It's just insane. Well, Abe has larger hands than I do. So he ordered this to begin with. A four and a quarter inch battle. Now there are a few four and a quarter inch battles, but this was one of the originals. And it's gorgeous. It's sexy. You'll see it's got a lot of the same stuff mine does. Marble carbon fiber, all blind screws, no hit, no, uh, no hardware showing. Uh, custom made pivot based off of the design Frank made for mine. All kinds of great polishing. Of course the jeweling on the interior did the uh, blue flush gear pattern backspacer like mine so a lot of similarities but a bigger knife also realize this the harpoon tanto was not a standard option in the beginning this was something that frank and i had discussed and decided to do and he actually ended up making one or two before he got to mine um but again one of mine is mine is one of the early ones this is one of the early ones typically a battle does not have the harpoon it's just just kind of slopes down beautifully well, what Abe decided to do was go balls to the wall. Frank said, you're going to have to wait at least a year for me to even think about tackling what you want me to do because of how difficult it's going to be, as well as I have a huge list of people that are ahead of your second order. First order completed, he immediately wanted his second order. So what they decided to do, and they went around and around and around with a lot of different ideas. And what they settled on was nothing short of amazing. Let's take a nice close look at it here. And we'll start discussing the ridiculousness of this four and a quarter inch one-off king battle. Starting here with the bolsters. That is, yes, absolutely gorgeous Damascus. So all of the bolsters are done in Damascus instead of titanium. So it is tremendously heavier than a standard battle. And you can hold these two side by side and feel what a big difference it is between titanium and Damascus. So you've got these beautiful bolsters in Damascus that are seamlessly, and I do mean seamlessly, mating up to beautiful blued Timascus for the scales. Now again, being a hidden hardware system, he's doing the keyhole slots inside of the frame, dropping the scale on, locking it in, and screwing it in from the inside. Once the knife is fully assembled, there's a special tool that he uses to get inside of there in order to take the scale off. Insane custom pivot. I do believe this is the first time we're seeing this exact pivot. So you've got a pivot similar to what mine was. It's a little bit more ornate even around the exterior. But instead of just having the holes in there, 
notice that those pockets are now filled with ball bearings. Now let's put it side by side. Let me see if I can keep the focus. Focus. And put it next to Abe's other one. And you'll see they're very, very similar. Instead of having holes, it has the actual ball bearings inside. That is sexy as shit. Get down here to more Damascus. We'll go this way. The liners are done in titanium, all fully polished, and then done in a beautiful, rich cobalt blue. Really nice contrast up against that very, very dark Damascus. The Damascus nearly goes black. I keep my studio set up for photography. But when I go to do videos, everything comes out a little bit lighter. And you'll notice if you look at my carbon fiber here, this is the same carbon fiber that I use for the majority of my photography. And you'll notice my, in my photography, and when I put my hand in there, it changes too. It's very, obviously, it's black. During the videos, it's a little bit uh, washed out. I just can't help it. This camera does not adjust as well as my DSLR does. But this Damascus is almost black. It may come across as a little more gray on your screen, but it definitely is very, very black. So you've got another big difference here is going to be the fact that this is a liner lock instead of a bolster lock. And that allowed Frank to keep the same exact look on both sides and give Abe something a little bit different because Abe already has the bolster lock. Coming back around, you'll notice the ginormous clip on this. Uh, to give you a size reference, mine is nowhere near as large. And that's also done in Damascus. So, so far, what we have here, Damascus and Timascus, that's it. Let's take a look at the back. The gear backspacer also happens to be full Timascus. That is a very large, very thick, and very expensive chunk of Timascus. I would have been deathly afraid of making a backspacer, as intricate as this one is, out of Timascus. Because you make one simple screw up, and you're chucking what would probably be about a $200 piece of Timascus right in the garbage. One of the things that I love about what Frank does is you almost can't tell. Now here, because we have a color difference, you normally almost can't tell that there's a backspacer here. It almost seems like an integral knife. And I'll give you the example on my knife and on Abe's knife that are just done in titanium. There's a very, very slightly noticeable seam between the titanium frame and the backspacer. He does such an incredible job of bringing all these materials together. Now we get to the blade. And of course, yes, incredible action. Does not have a Damascus blade. Instead, it has a San Mai blade. And really, the only difference there is when you th just think of it in its most basic, basic terms. Uh, with Damascus, you have multiple folded different types of steel. Folded, forged down, folded, forged down, folded, 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 folded. What you have here with San Mai, not entirely different, but it's a it's usually a soft steel, excuse me, a hard steel clad in a softer steel. So it's one steel clad over atop the other, and instead of having this Damascus style pattern all the way through the entire blade, you'll see it just covers parts of it. And it looks breathtaking. I have a couple of San Mai blades in my collection, a couple more being built right now. Uh, it is something that is, once you've had a couple, they're addicting because no two are ever going to be alike. They're always going to look different. There's just, there's nothing that you can do about that. And that's the beauty of it. And that's awesome. You know, really, it's kind of why we love custom knives. Because on a true full custom knife, like this is, no two will ever be alike as it stands. When you even put Abe's two together, there are still going to be differences in the grinds, in the flats, in the top swedge and harpoon, even little differences just in the handles. And that's because each and every one of these is made by hand. So everything has the possibility of being 
a little bit different from knife to knife. That's one of the things that we love about getting into a full-blown custom. This is, uh, what they've done is, they've, they've between the two of them, between Abe and Frank, they have named it the King Battle, because as it stands currently, this is the king of all battles. This is the most exotic, this is the most expensive, this was the most laborious and time-consuming. So, uh, honestly, without getting into engraving and inlays of gold and gemstones, you really couldn't put much more expensive materials on here anyway. So you've got some of the most expensive and exotic materials being used in one knife. Incredible action. Let's take a look at that lock up on the liner lock. Super crazy early. Oh my god. Take a good look at that. That's crazy. Inside of the back spacer, and this is going to be really tricky for me to be able to show with my lighting. But inside of there, let me flip it around. I think it's the other way. Yeah, it is the other way. It's right in there. It actually says, To Abe Galski. And then Frank has his name engraved in the rear portion of the backspacer. This is as special as it gets, guys. And uh, I feel honored to get the chance to play with it. Uh, Abe wanted it sent to me directly off of Frank's bench so I could do some photography and do this video. Uh, so he has not held this knife yet. I am the first person besides the maker to have touched and or possibly have molested this knife. It's, it's, it's alleged. It's alleged molestation. There's, there's no proof. You weren't there. There's no, there was no fucking camera present. This thing is incredible. So, all I'll say is this. Uh, Abe, you are a lucky son of a bitch, and I, I am very, very envious. Um, I don't know that I would carry something this large and heavy on a daily basis, uh, but it certainly is a breathtaking showpiece. But the thing with Gabe is, he will. Um, I have personally witnessed him on several occasions carrying this knife, beating it up, throwing it in the cup holder of his car and I mean it's these are daily use knives for him they don't get babied uh, they don't get any kind of preferential treatment just because they're a Frank Fisher um, it's hey that's the knife in my pocket I'm gonna use it and that's friggin awesome that means the the the, the work that's gone into this knife is is worth it you know it's going to somebody that's actually truly appreciating it listen I use every knife that I own no matter what task comes up, if there's a knife in my pocket, I use it. But I'll be perfectly honest with you, with my battle being my number one personal favorite knife, I tend not to carry this on days where I think I might have to actually cut something with it. Yeah, it's cut a few things, nothing crazy. I doubt I even have any marks on my blade. Because this is one of only two knives that I own that I do go out of my way to baby. I really don't want to screw this knife up. It, it is that special to me. So when it comes down to it, Abe's a user. Abe's an abuser. Um, and I'm not just talking about his personal relationships. <laughs> he is going to use and abuse the knife the way that it should be. And that's the kind of thing that Frank loves to see. You ever send him a picture of a knife you built uh, that he built for you and you got it sticking in a piece of wood or gutting open a catfish or some shit? Uh, yeah, he's, he's going to be really, really proud to see his work not only being on display on people's Instagrams and, and forum posts and whatever, but actually seeing them getting some use. He's an outdoor guy himself. He loves fishing. Uh, he loves shooting shit. So, you know, he's the kind of guy that he, whatever knife's going to be thrown in his pocket, it's probably going to get used to cut something open as well. So, there you have it, guys. Look at the jeweling. I, I, can, I can tell you, on the blued titanium in there, that jeweling is spectacular. It really is. It looks really, really cool. I dig that a lot. Uh, in case you guys haven't figured it out, I love Frank's work. Frank is uh, probably one of my absolute top favorite makers in the game today, period, bar none. I feel very fortunate to become friends with Frank, and I, I'm overjoyed, overwhelmed with joy, uh, that the videos that I've made on the original battle and then on my battle following that, um, that it filled up his books to the point where he could no longer take orders. I mean, he is years and years and years out from the demand of those videos, and I couldn't be more happy because there were so many people at that time that had never heard of him, that did not know he existed, that did not know the quality of work that that young man was putting out, and now to see 
And I've seen dozens of his knives in other people's collections. I have met people, sh shook their hands, held their knife, and they were going, I cannot believe I actually own a knife that's this amazing. It is up there with the absolute greats. When you say things like, uh, I don't know, Terzola, when you say, you know, I'm not even going to go in that. There are so many amazing makers in the game today, but there are so few that are in the actual elite that you know their name is going to live on forever. They're not going to be a flash in the pan. Their designs will live on forever. People will always want to collect their knives. The people will always spend top dollar. They will pay huge amounts of money at auction and on secondary market. Frank Fisher is one of those guys, and he got to that level very, very, very quickly. And it was simply because of the perfection that he built into his knives. There are not a lot of people in this world that are going to get a chance to own one, unfortunately. That's the way it is. And that can be said for, again, all of the top tier makers. But if you ever get a chance to handle a Frank Fisher, and you pick it up, and you play with it, and you flip it, and you look everywhere, you look inside, outside, all around, and you really look at it with a scrutinizing eye, you can't find a flaw. You can't find an area that's not pleasing to the eye as well as pleasing to the hand. Everything is rounded off and contoured and comfortable and sleek and sexy and smooth like I don't even know what. It's just it's the work that he does is in every way completely breathtaking. And I'm so very glad to see so many people that were able to get their hands on one of his knives you couldn't have found out any other way. You couldn't have just gone to a show. I mean, he just did his first Blade show this year. You know, you, you couldn't have just gone to any dealer because there were very rare occasions when a dealer had a Frank Fisher. And now you're hearing from more and more people. Again, this isn't about my videos. This is about the word of mouth that is, has been spreading since everybody started getting their knives and realizing just how amazing the work is. Now, I don't know what Gabe and Frank have planned for the future. If he's going to try to one-up this one, I don't know. I don't know if it can be done. But if he does, holy shit. I can't wait to fondle that one. So there you have it, guys. Uh, these are both Abe's. That one's mine. I actually get mine out of there for the time being. So there you have the two four-and-a-quarter-inch battles. The king battle is just... I mean, it really is. It truly is amazing. It's, it's earned the uh, the title that they gave it. It's worth every penny. I know what Abe spent. I will not tell anybody what Abe spent, but I can tell you right now, whatever number is in your head, uh, it is going to be very far north of that number. He paid a tremendous amount of money. The materials alone on this are tremendously expensive, but it's worth it. It's worth it to him because he knows he's got a knife that'll last him the rest of his life. He's got a knife that he knows he can carry every single day and do whatever the hell he wants to with it because he's been doing that for over a year with this one. So, Abe, again, my hat's off to you. Frank, congratulations on another stunning jaw-dropping piece. I don't know how you keep, you know, bettering yourself, but you do. And I'll say, I'll be, I'll, I'm happy to admit it. Uh, that's fucking amazing. I still like mine more. I don't know why. I just do. But this also fits my hand better. That four and a quarter inch. Oh, oh, it's big son bitch. Oh, you're a big son of a bitch. You know what I've never done? I've never held two four and a quarter inch battles at the same time. Whew. Look at that. That's fucking insane. Yeah, that's a big knife, isn't it? Baby got a big old booty, too. Look at that. Mm. Twin booties. Twin big baby booties. Bopping and bouncing. To the beat. All right, that's all the B words I can think of. All right, guys. Uh, I'm out of here for now. Thank you, as always, for watching. It was an extreme pleasure being able to bring this out to you. Thank you for watching, as always. And I will try my best, because I made a promise on the last video that I was going to be getting to a couple of other special pieces soon. So I'm going to do my best to get to those as quickly as I can. But until then, thank you for watching, and I'll see you next time.